Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, the inclined plane again. And this is what we did last time. Uh, remember, we took a little toy car and we rolled it down an incline like this. And we said, well, here's our angle of incline. And then we looked at the forces acting on this guy. And if, if there's no friction at all, and you just release this car from rest, there's only two forces acting. You've got mg, the weight of the car, and connected to the wheels, but we'll just draw it as one force. We've got this normal force. Now, obviously, this normal force doesn't cancel out all the weight. There's a component of the weight that's left over that pulls the car down the incline. Now, what we do here is we say, well, let's let the x direction be down the incline, and the y direction will be perpendicular to the incline. And then we say, well, look, let's take a look at this weight here. The weight has a component that's pressed into the incline, and then the weight has a component that is parallel to the incline, and it's this part of the weight that pulls the car down. Now, if uh, one of the things that we said is that if this is the angle of incline theta, then really this has been rotated up. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, do you see how that the pencil got rotated? If there was no angle of incline, the pencil kind of represents the normal direction. Well, the normal direction gets rotated with the plane. And notice that the angle it makes, if this gets rotated up theta, then this gets ro rotated up theta as well. So our angle of incline is also up there, which means that if you make a right triangle out of your weight, that this is the adjacent leg here, so this is mg cosine theta, and this is mg sine theta. Okay, and it's this mg sine theta that is the net force that causes the car to accelerate down the incline. So that's what we, uh, that's what we did last time. Well, now I'm going to give you a, a problem, a situation, an incline plane problem, that is probably the most complicated problem we're going to do in this class all year. I mean, there are more parts and more things going on here uh, than anything else. So if you can get through this, the rest of the year, is it's all downhill, OK? It's, it's a lot, you know, pardon the pun, but it's, it's all downhill uh, after the inclined plane problem. OK, so what if I had a situation like this where there were no wheels? What if I had a situation like this where um, I had a, an incline plane like this, and here's my incline, my angle, and I've got a crate like this. Maybe it's a refrigerator or something, and you're going to drag it up this ramp. So there's an applied force like that. And maybe this has a mass of m. And maybe there's friction, right? There should be friction, kinetic friction between the crate and the object. OK, and let's say that I'm accelerating this thing up the incline. So let's say that there's some acceleration here. Now, I'm not going to give you numbers for this. I'm just going to keep everything in terms of variables. Because all the problems I'm going to be giving you on inclined planes are, are going to be a variation on this theme right here. So I'm just going to show you how to set this problem up using the procedure we've been talking about for the last few weeks. And then you'll use that procedure to solve for whatever problem I give you. For example, I might give you the acceleration, the mass, the applied force, and the angle, and you have to figure out what the coefficient of friction has to be. Or maybe I'll give you the acceleration, the angle, the mass, and the coefficient of friction, and you have to figure out what applied force I would have to have to make this happen. So, you know, or, or anything else. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of variations to this problem. Well, if this is what's given, 
and then you're trying to find one of these variables could be the applied force, the acceleration mu, or the angle. Um, well, then you would solve it using the procedure. So the procedure says, okay, draw a free body diagram of your crate. So I'm going to redraw the crate. I'm going to tilt it. See how it's tilted to match the incline? And I'm going to show all the forces acting on it. So I've got the weight pulling it down. I've got the applied force pulling up like this, up, you know, parallel to the incline. I've got a normal force like this. The normal force keeps the object from accelerating up or down like that. It keeps it in equilibrium in this direction. Because look, the crate's not going to fly off into the air and it's not going to sink down into the plane. The, the motion, whether it be velocity or acceleration, of the crate is constrained or restricted to the plane. And of course, if we have friction, if this thing is slight, let's say it's sliding up the incline, then friction would point down. So here's my force of friction. And these are all the different forces that are acting on this crate as it accelerates up the incline. And so we have to, we have to uh, consider all these forces if we want to understand the motion of the crate. Well, the first thing I need to do now is, well, the next thing after step two, I need to do step three, which is to establish my x and y axis. Well, if, if it's given that the acceleration is up the incline, I'll make up the incline the positive x direction. And I'll make perpendicular to the incline my y direction. So if you have an incline plane problem, I always do this. Sometimes I make positive x down the incline. Sometimes I make it up the incline, depending on the direction of the acceleration, whatever's convenient. Now the reason, I think you can see now why we tilt the xy axis. Because look, the normal force is all in the y direction. The applied force is all in the x direction. The force of friction is in the negative x direction. What's the only force I need to break up into its x and y components? Gravity. So here's our force of gravity. So I got to say, all right, well, I've got a component in the y direction. I've got a component in the x direction. Make sure the x component of your gravity is parallel to the incline. This needs to be parallel. Here's my angle of incline theta. This is the adjacent leg, so this is mg cosine theta, and this is mg sine theta. For incline plane problems, gravity always gets broken up this exact way. I mean, you can put this on an equation list. This, this is always going to, no matter what these forces are doing, this is what you do to gravity on an incline plane problem. So I've completed step three. Now let's do step four. I sum the forces in the x direction, and I'm going to set that equal to ma in the x direction. Well, I look in the x direction. It tells me what's, what forces are in the x direction. Well, there's the applied force, there's the force of friction, and there's this component of gravity that's trying to pull it down the incline. So here we have Fa minus the force of friction minus, because now it's in the negative x direction here, mg sine theta, and that's going to be equal to M A. Now this gives me an equation now that I can use to solve for my unknowns. Maybe I'm solving for the acceleration. Just divide both sides by the mass. But there is this problem, this force of friction. It needs to be expressed in terms of the normal force and the coefficient of friction. 
Now, to figure out what the normal force is, then I need to look in the y direction. Okay. Now let's look in the y direction. How many forces do you see are in the y direction on my free body diagram? Just two. There's the normal force. And then in the negative y direction, there's minus mg cosine theta, this one right here. It may seem confusing to you that we're using cosine theta even though we're looking in the y direction, but that comes from this little right triangle that we drew here when we broke up the weight into its normal and parallel components, its y and x components, and this theta is measured from the vertical. Equals. Now, what is the acceleration in the y direction? Look at the picture. How is this mass going to accelerate in this direction like this? It's not going to. It can't. This is zero. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me that the normal force is just equal to the component of the weight that's pressed into the incline, mg cosine theta. This normal force is just canceling this out right here. Well, now I can figure out what the force of friction is. It's equal to mu times mg cosine theta, because the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. So I can use this and stick it up there. Okay. Now, this will allow you to solve any inclined plane problem I give you. Even if the acceleration is zero. What if it's sliding up the incline at a constant velocity? What if they say that in the problem? What does that mean? Acceleration is just zero here. So you just set all these equal to zero and solve. What if the acceleration is down the incline? Well, you can make this negative, or you could change the direction of your x-axis. What if the object was sliding down the incline? How would that change this problem if the, if the thing was sliding down? Well, that would change the direction of the friction, wouldn't it? If the crate is sliding down the incline, the force of friction would be up the incline. I mean, so you have to keep track of little things like that. But this basic problem-solving process will solve the problem for you, okay? I mean, you'll get it. I expect you to show all this work when you do incline plane problems. And that's what's hard about it. You have to be methodical and neat in your work. If you try to take shortcuts, if you try not to, if you try to get away with not writing things down, you're going to make mistakes. Now, look, none of you, well, maybe a very few of you, might end up using this this stuff right here. Let's say you're an industrial engineer and you work for FedEx, and you've got crates that are going to be moving up a conveyor belt, you know, in your shipping containers or whatever. You work in a factory or something where they're moving objects on conveyor belts. You would actually do this analysis to figure out what angle to make your ramps and all the, that kind of thing. But most of you aren't going to do that. But let, let's say you're a registered nurse and you have to compute a, dos, uh, a dosage for a patient. How much medicine to give them based on their weight and their age. I sure hope you would do your work methodically and neatly so that you'll get to the right answer. Okay, so that's the value in learning how to do these problems. I don't really care that much about inclined planes. But I really care that you guys know how to solve problems accurately. Because if you can't, you're either not going to get the job or you're going to do a bad job and kill some poor patient. You know. And by the time you get there, it'll probably be me. So uh, you know, I want, I want to train you well. Okay. So that's, uh, that's how to handle inclined plane problems. I want you to do assign finish assignment three and four. 
You have about 10 more minutes of class. Why don't you get a problem or two done? That's all. <laughs>